you know, everybody like have the right to say what they want to say. Now, I don't really believe that you can say anything that you want to say. That's a kind of a, a different version of that. Uh, you can say whatever you want to say, but you are not immune to consequences, right? Mm -hmm. um, so that's mm -hmm. why I joined that one meetup. Um, that's why I kept like harassing you on X. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm I'm sorry, man. You know, I'm no, not that's really. Cool. The, um, I have to get more into social media for sure, uh, man. You know, it's no, just don't lot. do it. Don't do I it. I know, right? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> as far as just like just just for you know like just to interact with people, just to be more you know well rounded with individuals and stuff like that. Because sure. you know, because I, I have to you know at least like try to make some type of connections with someone. I'm not like on like social media like posting anything like that, but you know. It's just the far, you know, marketing and stuff like that. Otherwise, I, we wouldn't be having this conversation, right? I, I know, right? Like, I think, <laughs> I, and, and, you know, people will ask me sometimes, they'll say, like, hey, is social media, do you think that social media is the downfall of, like, everybody? And I said, you know, there's a lot of bad that's come with social media. But if you just think about all those people you couldn't have spoken to, all of the, like, kind of worldly perspectives you couldn't get, the research you couldn't have, if you're using it for those things, that's amazing, right? Like building sure. connections. If you're using it to isolate yourself, to just echo chamber or to not go outside anymore. You right. Know, um, just basically being a rock in the house. Yeah. I'm, yeah. yeah. That's, that's more of a problem, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. But, but then it's just like, it's just, um, it's just a lot of dark things behind social media that people, um, I'm sorry, excuse me, that people don't really know about. As far as like, there's just a lot of child trafficking that goes on on the social media. A lot of, um, I honestly want to say a lot of teenage girls in America, like, you know, they, a lot of, you know, I would say self-inflicted deaths. I can't really say what I want to say, but you know, like they're, they, it, you know, majority of it comes from social media because they're exploited all throughout, of, you know, the internet. And, you know, once because I can't imagine something like that happening to one of my family members or God right. forbid one of your family members, you know, and they're just embarrassed to even show their face in public because right. it's just so ashamed, you know? So it's just, you know, it's just a matter of just, you know, keeping people privacy because, you know, social media have just so much access to everything as far as your, you know, your name, first and last name, they got your phone number, they got your email address. I mean, that there, I mean, all they missing is your social security number at that point, you know? So <laughs> sure. it's like, man. Um, I, I, I agree with a, a lot of those things. The thing that I would probably, I don't know, disagree with is that although social media does allow, like I think we had this conversation before, but of course no one else has heard it. But um, mm -hmm. if, if social media were, today, if social media is used to traffic people, then at the very least you have a record. Uh, and you can follow that and you can actually get that information and you can try and do something about it. You can actually get law enforcement involved when, uh, you know, child trafficking was and kidnappings and all those sorts of things were actually at their highest points, which is decades ago. We right. didn't talk about it. Right. People went outside and they went to school just fine, which is which is great that they went outside. Um, we should do more of that today because it's relatively safe right, to be a kid these days um, comparatively. Uh, but. Uh, really what's going on, like at, at the very least, social media lets you track it versus just sort of disappearing decades ago. That would right. be an advantage. The disadvantage to your point is that, you know, there's a lot of perhaps inadvertent even giving out of information that allows crimes to take place or allows, you know, bad actors to gain information that they otherwise exactly. wouldn't have had. They would have had to go through your trash, you know, to find the same level. Yeah, of it's for real. <laughs> yeah. Um, and luck out, because generally speaking, you, you, one piece of paper doesn't have everything on it, but one social media account has everything on it. Right. right. I, I mean, yeah, there, there. I mean, there's some truth to that, but it's just a matter of just, just a matter of just decency at this point, though. You know what I'm saying? Because uh, I, I believe, well, like they haven't really heard what we talked about, but mm -hmm. uh, as we were talking about before with the whole um, Mark Zuckerberg thing, when he was when he showed up to. Um, you know, when he showed up to the um, to the Washington, D.C. And basically, Ted Cruz, he was asking him, why would you give uh We don't know if they're like predators or not, but let's let's just say they are predators. You know what I'm saying? Why would you give them an option to, um, you know, see results anyway, 
or you know what I'm saying report like harassment or something like that. Why? First of all, why would C result anyway just be an option? Like regardless, if we know this is like sexually exploit, like exploited, you know. And and my thing is just with with Meta in general. Like I just feel like there's a we. It's just a dark secret that we all really don't know about because some you know there's just you know so much corruption when it comes to the government, and we all know that the government are is using social media to to you know use their narratives as as far as Silex, you know, basically trying to get rid of free speech because we know you can't really say anything on social media if we're being honest. You know what I'm saying? Like they're they're trying to use social media for just so much things, and I just believe that it's it's not really gonna end well for Americans because at the end of the day, like you know, everybody like have the right to say what they want to say. Now I don't really believe that you can say anything that you want to say, but you have that you know you have that right you just have to be responsible for what you say you know sure yeah to, to i mean so in part that's the that's the kind of a, a different version of that uh you can say whatever you want to say but you are not immune to consequences right mm-hmm. Um, for instance, like if you are working for Nike, um, and you were trying to sell like a different brand shoe for them or different clothing uh, line for every single person who came through the door, they should be able to fire you, but they shouldn't be able to put you in jail for that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I mean, but that's the thing though. Like you kind of do need a job though. You know what I'm saying? Like, sure. Yeah. You, <laughs> I, I you, definitely need a job. You know right? what I'm saying? I've got so one, like, but I, I always need to keep it. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. That's what I'm saying. So, and, and speaking of jobs, they have like they have these workplaces to where, like, let's say you have a um, you know, a person who's transitioned. I'm gonna say, sure. and you have a, you know, you have one woman here that's not really comfortable with that situation, and that that person that transitioned wants to enter that bathroom. Now, if the woman really doesn't feel comfortable, and we don't even really know this person that transitioned, this person could be anyone. You know what I'm saying? This person could be an axe murderer for all we know. Now, if that woman doesn't feel comfortable, goes to her boss and says, oh, um, I don't really feel comfortable with this, you know, person in the bathroom with me. Uh, Would it be right for the woman to get fired? So I don't I don't think it's right if a person brings any concern to the proper chain. Right. If they're following the proper path inside of an employment chain, uh, then they should never be fired for that, regardless of whatever their concern is. Right. They could come in and be like, I don't you know, HR, I'm sorry, but I don't think enough people are doing, you know, heroin in the bathroom. They could have that concern. Right. Right. That that ludicrous of a concern. But as long as they went to HR to it, they didn't just start handing out heroin to everybody and they weren't going into the bathroom and saying, you need to do heroin, right? Um, mm-hmm. Then they're following the the proper path that the employer even set up for them. So to me, that would be a break of kind of the employer's contract if they were to fire the person. Now, unfortunately, we live in a lot of, uh, in the United States at least, we live in a lot of places that are the kind of it's not just right to work, but it's like voluntary work status where basically you can be fired at any time for any reason. If there is no cause given, you can get unemployment. That's the only safety net you get, right? So Mm -hmm. um, as an employer, if you were to say the sky was purple, I could actually fire you, just not for that. I I would just have to say, "Eh, I don't, I I didn't didn't fire him for any particular reason at all, right? Right. Um, And that would be enough. In most places, in the United States, um, so that that's where the that's where the problem comes in. So that woman in that in in that hypothetical situation should not be fired for coming in and saying, "Hey, I have a concern or I feel uncomfortable," um, you know, because this other person, regardless, they're they're transitioned. They they may be an axe murderer. They they're not doing enough heroin in the bathroom. It doesn't really matter the reason, as long as they're following that path, right? Right. As long um, as they're doing the right thing, yeah, I, I believe, I like, I honestly, like, agree with you when it comes to all that. Like, if they're being, a, like, a, you know, a law-abiding citizen, mm-hmm. I don't really mind them, you know, living. Like, a, a lot of people fail to understand. Okay, I guess I, we have someone else in here. Hello, <laughs> Hello. how's it going? So, um, a lot of people fail to realize that, um... We don't really have like a problem when it comes to a person being a law abiding citizen. On the other hand, if we don't really know like the background of these people, like 
I mean, me personally, like you said, and you, you can agree that you don't believe that woman deserves to get fired for that because, I mean, that's a, you know, that's a personal thing with her that she has the right to feel uncomfortable with, correct? Now, yeah. in, now in my opinion, like, yes, they're law-abiding citizens, but, I mean, are we really going to fall, like, into their delusion, though? Because we do know, like, I mean, we can we can keep all the biology stuff out of it, like with the XY chromosomes, double X chromosome. I'm not really going to get into like specifics because we all know, like, you know, those people don't really care about that stuff, man. So, I mean, but if we're just talking strictly logic here, like, why would you have to transition yourself if because the, the argument with these people is always that, oh, I feel like this or I feel like that. Well, if you feel that way already, why are you transitioning to something that you already feel like you are? You know what I'm saying? Sure. Um, I don't know if we're trying to like do rounds or circles, but I can certainly respond to that. So oh, no, no, you, I'm sorry. You can respond. Go ahead. Okay, cool. Um, so uh, I know it was kind of more freeform, but I just wanted to make sure. Um, so as far as like... <sighs> as far as all of those, those points go, right? So yeah. um, if a person's in a workplace, uh, I mean, you can be sort of forced uh, to say various things in, as part of your employment, right? As long as it doesn't actually break the law. So you can't be forced to, for instance, uh, uh, lie, although you can be forced to say, agree with or support uh, numbers that you don't exactly have access to or can create, right? So in mm -hmm. a way, that could be like a false statement. And then it's up to you whether or not you want to stay employed with an employer who may not be not may not have the highest of integrity, right? So just just to get that out of the way, um, there is certainly a case to be made for uh, that that shouldn't be the way businesses are operated. And I agree with that, though whether or not we could enforce that legally would be really questionable, right? To the other point, um, as far as kind of the, the more general social question about transitioning, the idea isn't just, hey, I feel this way. Mm -hmm. It's um, that inside of the societal structure that we have, I um, feel like I'm over here more than I'm over here. And other people cause this um, distract, like this uh, disconnect for me, because when they look at me, they see me as a man or a woman, which, regardless of which you know, which, whichever way you're transitioning, or either one of those if you're non-binary, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I, I choose to go out and make a decision where I then alter myself so that I don't have that disconnect between um, the societal existence and my internal existence, right? Mm -hmm. um, if we could all, uh, you know, just our feelings made reality or our feelings made um, existence fine, um, I don't, I don't think we'd ever have um, a problem with anyone who ever had any uh, concern or issue in society, right? Um, mm -hmm. For for me, it comes down to whether or not these things should be legally protected. Um, that's the question I have. Uh, we know psychologically people have documented things like gender dysphoria. We have people who are just transgender who don't necessarily have gender dysphoria. Um, because I, I got a they, question about that, yeah, too. Go ahead. You keep going. So you say gender dysphoria. So do you believe sure. that gender dysphoria is a mental illness? So gender dysphoria is in the DSM, right, uh, which is the mm -hmm. Diagnostic Statistics Manual for psychology, and that would be a specific uh, mental illness. But all transgender people do not have gender dysphoria. Okay, and all no, no, people I, who seek to physically transition dysphoria, don't have gender dysphoria. Yeah. So what, so what would you call it? Like, what would you call it if it's not gender dysphoria, then what is it? Sure. So this is where we get into, like, the, the long history of complicated social identities. Uh, so, and this is, is part of... Is it complicated for you or just no. for everybody? I, so I, I call it complicated because it is you'll have on on one occasion, people will say this is not a historical thing. And then right. if you actually look into history, um, transgendered individuals have existed throughout all of time and every single and almost every single society um, across the earth for thousands of years. Um, so I mean, that, I, I believe that's where it, it becomes sexual acts, of, of course. But I mean. There's people, third genders, fourth genders, fifth genders, people who are her, um, who we might classify as hermaphrodites. Yeah, all throughout history. 
Um, this what is, is the, what is the fourth gender? What is oh Lord the, have mercy? So man. depending upon where you are in the world, right? This is why I'm saying like, if if you believe what, that I'm are, saying what comes after mm-hmm. a man and a woman, like what is after that? Like I'm just not understanding. Sure. Uh, so, I mean, first you'll have the larger group, which is like non-binary, right? Which is someone who doesn't identify as either a man or a woman. Uh, so that's... what is, okay, okay, okay. So uh, when a person identifies as non-binary, mm-hmm. what does that mean exactly? Does that, does that still mean that they're a man or a woman? Do they just not claim the title or do they sure. really believe that they're not a man or a woman? Like I'm kind of confused. So it might be helpful to talk about a little bit of language. So this would be a a semantics piece, but it's important. Um, So when we're talking about, you know, words and what they mean, right? Mm -hmm. um, They can fall into basically three different categories. You could have like a hard science or hard data based information. You could have a legal understanding of the word, right? Which requires some kind of barriers and definitions. And then you have a social definition of a word. And I can give you a really quick example that doesn't rely on gender. Uh, So for all time, we have legally acknowledged and accepted and backed um, a social identity that people can claim at any point in time that, that indicates their truth of the world. Uh, Such as with, what, though? Like exactly. Example. So religion. So no one is no one is uh, saying, "Hey, uh, if you cla- if you classify yourself as Christian." Right. No one is coming up to you and saying, well, where's the hard science behind that? Where's the biology behind that? Um, Or I'm here. I'll even pull out a hundred points of things you have to do according to the Bible. And then I can tell you whether or not you're Christian. I can't do that. That's the thing, though. See, you're losing me now because sure. Are you comparing being Christian to someone being like having gender dysphoria or someone being transgender, because that actually can be proven by like through biology. That's a, like someone is a man or someone is a woman. Like, and that's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm not really trying to dive into biology because I know how them, them people get when it comes to it. But I mean, we got to like, we, call we can go into biology too. So, so here, here's, here's the, here's the problem, right? So when we think about um, religious protections, right, they're legal and it's something essentially you could make up. It, it, no one can no one can gauge it. No one can uh, ask you uh, how you prove you're religious, right? And yet we protect you um, if you claim to be religious and whatever religion you claim uh, by the law, the actual law. But isn't gender you, a even social construct employer. as well? Gen- isn't gender a social construct to you? Like to you know? Well, that that's that's the point, right? Is that religion is a social construct, right? Um, so in in that regard. Um, if I claim myself as Christian, I could um, tell my employer I don't. I'm not going to work on Sundays because of a religious holiday. Okay, but I can you actually can't biologically. You can't biologically prove that you're a Christian. I can biologically prove that I am a man, though, and like doctors and you know people who study the human body can prove. Like if someone is buried, like let's say, let's go back to um like years ago, like when Mount Vesuvius wiped out you know everybody. And we have people that are basically buried under rubble, right? They pick sure. up their bones. You dig up their bones, right? You put their bones in a lab. If they identified as anything, whatever, when they was living, when that um, test result comes back, they're gonna, it's going to come back exactly what that person was, whether it was a man or a woman. That's going to be two options, man. So, so in my that, opinion, That's not necessarily true. Um, so if you wait, so if yeah, wait, so if someone gets so if someone dies and Correct. they gets buried and they gets their DNA, it's not gonna it's gonna come back other than you know a man or woman DNA. So the, here's the, here's the problem is that um, one sex chromosomes don't necessarily dictate which genitalia you have, although it's very correlated. There's a high likelihood of what uh, you know sex chromosomes you have equal what. Uh, genitalia you'll have. Uh, DNA also breaks down over time. So if it's too old, we wouldn't actually be able to check. Um, But there's also this really interesting thing that happens. So for instance, if a woman gets pregnant, right, and she, it's a boy, uh, and you test her for sex chromosomes beforehand, you're more than likely going to find XX, right? But you don't, you won't necessarily, that's not a given, but you'll most likely find XX. And then 
uh, you test her while she's pregnant, depending upon where you test her and how, she may actually have XY chromosomes functioning within but her this body. this is before the baby's... You're talking this about This is before, before the baby is born. baby's born. I'm talking and about And it's her body. But no, keep in mind, then she gives birth, you test her again, she may still have XY chromosomes. And the latest that a person had that was something like 72 that oh, we know okay. of. So... Okay. So that's that's a problem that, that, that makes it ambiguous. That doesn't defeat the point or anything. That's not to say like, mm -hmm. oh, you can't do this at all. Right. It just complicates the matter. Right? right. Now, the question becomes really in society. So we're interacting. Right. Um, what pronouns would you use for me? And this isn't a gotcha question. I'm pretty sure I'll say the no, same. I would call you a guy for sure. Exactly. <laughs> right. So and, and, I, I'm a guy. I, I identify as a guy. Right. Um, I, I'm imagining you do, too. Right. For sure. Yeah, um, for sure. But I can I can guarantee you I've never seen your genitalia. Right. And you've probably never seen mine unless you have a weird camera set up somewhere over here. No, no. absolutely. Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> and and 95, 99 percent of my friends have never seen my genitalia in any way, shape or form, not, you know, on purpose or on accident. Right. That's and, because you look like a guy, though. You would you have guy features. But, pe but, but people, uh, I, and this just happened even yesterday, I walked into a cafeteria at a hospital and uh, uh, the person was like, how can I help you, ma'am? Because I have long hair. And I cut my hair every once in a while and I donate it. And I, I, tell, I kid you not, yeah. just by cutting my hair, that stops. Yeah, for sure. Because women right. naturally have long hair in society. Well, really all Sure, but history. this society... If you were to go back uh, to okay, like Roman I mean, society, this, okay, and, uh, or society, other societies, I, I, right? I, I, I understand what you're saying, but yeah. this society doesn't really like, you know, it isn't really the exception to the the rule to like all of society in general throughout history. You know what I'm saying? Like throughout all of history, women had long hair. You know what I'm saying? So, but, but that's not and, that's and, not and, true and in every is, society, right? That's okay. that's all I'm saying. Uh, what I'm saying is that like we recognized these things without ever interacting with any kind of biological test. We didn't look at sex chromosomes. I didn't have to show you my birth certificate, right? Right. Now let now let's imagine just for a moment, and this is just a matter of implication because I, I I'm usually a utilitarian. So in a lot of ways, I'm like, how would you even implement this, right? So mm -hmm. now you're the employer who had the problem where a woman came to you and she said, hey, I feel uncomfortable with this person who says they've transitioned, they're a woman, they want to use the bathroom. Okay, so now you're an employer. You have to be fair. You have to be equal across the board. You can't just do something for one person. How do or you make them check? use the bathroom that they're supposed to use? But how do you check that that person? I can look at which them. Bathroom? I mean, let's just, let's, just, let's, just, let's just call a spade a spade, man. I can look at a person and tell if they're, you can do all the altering you want. See, that's what I'm saying. Like, why why are trans why are trans altering their face and their body and their hair to make them like their hair long why do they have to do all that because they know deep down inside they look like a man you know what i'm saying so they have to do sure. the surgeries they have to do the plastic implants they have to do all this stuff because they want to portray themselves this is what i, I call this woman face because let's just be honest if somebody was doing this and they wanted to be okay look let's say let's just let's just take let's just take gender out of it right mm -hmm. so let's say i'm a white man right and i painted myself with white paint and all this that and the third and i basically act and presume and you know what i'm saying i act with the stereotype like how a white man is supposed to act would that sure. be offensive to white people um i wouldn't be offended um I would probably still think of it as like, what's going on? Okay, but I don't so really, like, I don't okay, really get versa, offended. Vice so. versa, vice versa. Let's yeah. say you pretended to be a black man, which sure. would be ooh wee. You know, I what would, I'm I would have to have a really good reason, like Ray Charles, because he's one of my favorite. Uh, but, musicians. but listen but, though, but listen, would you be offended though if if well, well, okay, what um I don't know if you know any uh African Americans, but if you do know any, yeah. would they be offended if um. If you did that and showed up, be like, hey, I'm a black guy. You know what I'm saying? Like, would they be offended if you did that? I would say there's a good chance. Yes. There's a good chance. So yeah, there, some people might that, be like, oh, that's Danny being weird or something like that. Yeah, but, yeah. So don't you think that it's the same thing for trans when it comes to actual women? And then it's, you know that they're actually taking they're taking over women's sports, too. We do know that these are yes. me personally. I'm not trying to, you know, ruffle any feathers or nothing. But me personally, I feel like they still have an advantage against actual women because they still have testosterone levels. I know they take hormone blockers and this, then the third. 
but they still have way more testosterone than they do than they do an average woman. The bone density d- d- isn't going anywhere. The, sh- High, the broadness of the strain. shoulders There's isn't going things. anywhere. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So it's like they're they're gonna have the full advantage of this. You know what I'm saying? When it comes to sports, you know what I'm saying? Sure. Any really anything. So I just have one more question for you. So oh, um, excuse me. I didn't oh, I'm enjoy- sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I'm Amber. I'm not sure exactly uh, what you guys are talking about, but it sounds like you guys may have been talking about the uh, LGBT community. Well, something like that. We were basically trying to say uh, how, well, you're a woman, actually, so you will actually be perfect for this. So uh, we were actually talking about transgender, um, you know, people transitioning to you know, women or men or something like that. And we mm-hmm. were actually we were actually seeing if it would be offensive if we, if, you know what I'm saying, if it wasn't gender, if it was, you know, color in this uh, situation. So I was basically saying if I, you know, painted my face white or if you painted yourself, <laughs> you know, with a black face, would that be offensive? And, I mean, we both could come to an agreement that, yes, that would be offensive to both parties. So we're going to ask you, an actual woman, do you think that, you know, people that are transitioning to women, do you think that is another, like, another form of blackface, but it's like woman face because they're, like, they're kind of mocking women or, like, how do you feel about the situation? Um, honestly, I feel exactly that. Um, you know, as a woman, it's just very, like, sometimes, I can't even come up with the words to say it, like, it's just very disrespectful, you know, just as a woman, like, I don't care what nobody says. Like, as a woman, you're not, even as you transition, you're never going to actually be able to feel exactly what women feel. So, it's to me, it's just like a slap in the face. Like, mm-hmm. and, you know, honestly, I can say the same for men. Like, women don't know what men go through, you know. We can't feel what y'all go through. So, you know, men are always going to be men. Women are always going to be women. You can pretend to be a woman all you want. Um, you know, physically you could try to be or, you know, however you want to act. But at the end of the day, the way you were born, you know, that's just the way you were born. And, you know, even still then, like, it it just it's just too much when it comes to that. It confuses the kids. You know, exactly, and, yeah, and honestly, it makes kids uncomfortable. They're um basically indoctrinating children, whether people want to admit it or not. It's just all child, child indoctrination when it comes to that, you know, pressuring and pushing this on the kids. And now, yeah, they are putting it in like children's books and stuff. I'm sorry, go ahead, and not even just that. Now, they're trying to, um, you know, basically like put it in the schools and you know, have um you know, bathrooms, uh, you know. That's what we were talking about earlier, too. Uh, Is it acceptable for a person who's transitioned to, uh, like, let's say a person transitioned to a woman, is it acceptable for um, them to use women's restroom? Do you, would you want to see a person who's transitioned in your restroom? Absolutely not. Absolutely not, because, you know. Why, why, why not? I'm just trying to, I'm just asking questions. at the end of the day, you're still. I don't want to be in the restroom with a man, because you know. First of all, any now they have it to where anybody can identify as anything. So even if he isn't transitioning, he could just go in there and say, "I'm a transgender," just to go in the bathroom and harm women and children. Okay. So it's like, is it just um, safe? Do, do you want to respond to that? Uh, sure. So I, I agree that bathrooms are a place that need to be safe spaces, uh, very much mm-hmm. so. Um, where I think um, it, it kind of gets more difficult is with children, you would actually want bathrooms either separated out um, or you would want bathrooms where a, like a mother could go in with her son. Uh, and that would be difficult if a bathroom was hard lock restricted by sex. Uh, the other disadvantage um, would be that if you have bathrooms that are isolated by sex, how do you enforce that? How do you check? That's the mm-hmm. question. 
right? Now, in most, you know, a lot of people will be like, oh, well, you just don't use it, right? Like people don't use it today. Well, that's not entirely true. There's been plenty of people who have transitioned who have used bathrooms without anyone noticing or anyone knowing um, because they're convincingly, uh, for even your standards, um, you know, uh, switched over. Like you you wouldn't be able to tell unless um, they, they let you know. Um, that's that's where part of the difficulty comes into play. Now, it doesn't help, right? So, you know, one of the things I did was I read J.K. Rowling's entire spiel about um, bathrooms. And she had been a victim of actual assault inside of a bathroom. Um, mm-hmm. and, and, you know, and I'm not going to distrust her. I'm not going to say allegedly or anything like that. She said it. I, I'm going to accept that, right? Um, her fear over that scenario is legitimate. It's it's a thing that we have to account for because it's the same thing on the other side, right? Like if a person's transitioned, they fear actually getting assaulted in the bathroom of their sex um, and they don't fear getting assaulted in the bathroom of their gender. Um, and it actually happens quite often. Okay, so so right? I have one more question uh, uh, on this topic and we're just gonna talk about one more topic. Sure. So if, um, okay, let's say, um, just hypothetically, right? We have we have a, a person who's transitioned right here, right? Okay. Now, and me and you are talking, and yep. uh, the the person who's transitioned, they they walk up to us in our conversation, right? And we're talking, and um, I end up calling that person a he, and you mm-hmm. end up calling that person a he as well, and they get offended and say, "Oh, I'm not a he, I'm a she." Um, sure. do you feel like who do you feel like is in the wrong here? Do you feel like we're wrong because we're offending the person because we're not calling them by what they want to be called or is the person who transitioned wrong because they're trying to basically push their narrative out to the whole world into believing that the world uh, revolves around them. So the way I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I I know, I know it's like a group of people. Like I know it's like, I'm not saying that, you know, these people don't get hurt or these people don't, you know, no, no criticism or anything like that. But, and you're not even saying that everyone is that way. You're just saying in right. this particular situation, just what this, would be more, who's more right, essentially. Who's more right? Okay, just right. in this specific situation, who's more right? Yeah, um, so I think the the way it works is is this, and, and this is the same thing in, regardless of any kind of social identity, and I'll give that example as well. If you honestly make a mistake, you honestly made a mistake. If a person can't accept that- But what if it wasn't that, a mistake, though? That That's my thing, though. What if it wasn't a mistake? Sure. What if I just know this person is just trying to dress up like a, a female sure. and he's not? So in those I cases- I have a question after that. Too. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, no, so, no, no, no. Let, let, let Danny finish. Go ahead. Yeah. So in that, in that scenario, if you were intentionally using a word you know would hurt the other person, then you're in the wrong regardless of what word you use, right? Is the you, truth hurtful, though? Because but, let's, but because here's the thing. What I- what even I do, if oh, I ahead. use the truth, right? Even if I use the truth, but I'm doing it intending to hurt another person. It wouldn't be intentional. It would just basically mean I'm not feeding into someone's delusion. See, I'm not going to delude myself into thinking that you're something that you're not, because that's that's going to change a whole narrative when it comes to psychosis. You know what I'm saying? So when if, if I know that that's what something is, like mm-hmm. that's just like me saying, oh, this is an apple. But I know it's an orange. That's basically just that's warping the brain, in my opinion. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's nothing personal against you. It's right. just that I don't want to feel like I'm becoming cuckoo because I'm feeding into someone's basically, you know, that's thinking that the world revolves around them. So if we're having a one on one conversation, right, and uh-huh. you you let me know that you're uh, Catholic, let's say, uh, I don't know what your re- religion is, but if you say you're right. a Catholic and I said, Oh, um, this is, you know, my friend and he's a Christian. Right. And you're like, no, 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 I, I'm a Catholic. I prefer to be called a Catholic. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, I can have, I have a couple of options there, right. I could continue to call you a Christian or I could alter that and call you a Catholic. There's, there's no way for me to gauge which one is correct. There's only a way for me to either do what you're requesting me to do in the social situation or walk away. See, well, that's the thing. You're, you're trying to compare religion to biology again. Like my thing but it, is, but this isn't a biology. You're not checking the person's biology. But I could see it though. I could literally tell that that's a dude. It is you know a hard to tell, honestly. I'm sorry. I go mean, ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, Amber. Yeah. I'm sorry. You, you had a question though, so. Yeah, I'm sorry. Go yeah. ahead, Amber. I'm sorry. Um. So I was gonna say. Um, you were asking like, 
<clears throat> like if it would be offensive, right? So, yes. So, would it be offensive to the person who birthed you for you to disown uh, who you were actually born to be? Should they feel? Should they not be? You know, able to feel no type of way. Well, everyone I mean, can feel however they want to feel, right? That that's not really up to anyone else to decide. So if they indicated that they had transitioned and their parents didn't acknowledge that or one of their parents didn't acknowledge that or didn't like that or were to your point saying like hey i'm looking at the truth of biology here and you were born uh with the capacity to make large gametes and now you're saying no i only make small game you know I'm, I'm recognizing myself or identifying myself with people who make small gametes so a woman transitioning to a man um but, in, but in those cases is, I, I, I'm, I'm sorry go ahead uh, i i I, I don't think that like th th that's not for us to decide. I can't decide how you feel about something. Okay, I can't well, make I you think feel the point something she was, about something. I think the point she was trying to really get at is it's not really about feelings in this case. It's about what's real and what's not real. Because I can tell you two plus two is four, correct? That you is can. A, but it but it is factually true, correct? Two plus so two, two is plus four. two is four. Yes, factually. Two plus two yes. is four. Now you might not like that. You know what I'm saying? You might not like two plus two is four, but you know, it is four. Now you can still make the argument that, oh, three plus one is four. You know what I'm saying? And you know what I'm saying? But it's like at the end of the day, <clears throat> it's still four. You know what I'm saying? You can alter yourself and make it different however you want, but at the end of the day, that's still what it is. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like, okay, I'm telling you two plus two is four. You're telling me three plus three is four, but it's still four. You know what I'm saying? Like, and, and that and that, that just kind of equivalates to you just, you're a guy. Like, you know what I'm saying? You have X, Y chromosomes, and it doesn't really matter how you alter yourself. That's where the three plus one analogy come in. But, you know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, you're still four. You know what I'm saying? Now, you, you can feel any way you want to feel about that. Like you said, like, now, no one's, like, not telling you not to feel bad or anything. But at the, at the end of the day, we still have to live in truth and reality, in my opinion, because... If we don't, I mean, that's just going to come down to a crumbling society because people are just going to start believing they can fly and then they're just going to start jumping off buildings. And this is like, honestly, this is really harmful to like children in my book, like because they're pushing this on kids into belief, into thinking they can be anything that they want nowadays. You know what I'm saying? Now, it's cool. Like back in the day, like, you know, what I'm saying if you want to pretend to be Spider-Man or Cinderella or Barbie or the Hulk or something like that. That's cool. You know what I'm saying? But. To actually, you know, tell your parents, I think I'm a girl when you're a boy. Like, I mean, me personally, that child needs, like, a lot of, you know, talking to. Because at the end of the day, like, that's just something you're just never going to be. You want, you know what I'm saying? Sure. Um, I, 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 I get Sorry, I went saying. on a rant a little bit. But, Sorry no, no. What, what I... Where, where I think that the breakdown is, is that, you know, you keep referencing sex and the truth, right? And I get it, right? Like, we don't want to live in a society that isn't seeking truth or isn't understanding truth. The, mm -hmm. the downside is that that breaks down in almost every single social interaction people have. Right. If you're talking to your friend and your friend feels that when they were in a car accident, it was the scariest thing in their entire life. But everyone walked out just fine. Truthfully speaking, no one was hurt. It, it wasn't really a problem. Um, and it wasn't, you know, you're not really sure, like by the data, like if someone just handed you the car accident report, um, nobody got hurt. Nobody was even mildly injured. Even maybe the car was just fine. Who knows? Right. Right. Um, at the end of the day, to understand that person's experience and interact with them in a genuine way, you have to start where they are, not where you are. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and and I think that is where the kind of confusion in the in the statement. Now, now there are people who have transitioned who want you to, regardless of what happens, they're going to get offended the first time um, you, you misgender them. They're going to not, you know, give the credit that you're trying to be genuine. But at the same time, if you're genuinely trying to interact with that person, this is part of their experience. Whether you consider it crazy and they don't or not is kind of neither here nor there um, because do we don't hold it in any other situation. Rule, it's not an exception to the rule. 
Okay, okay, okay. Right? We, that's how we interact. If you tell me that there's an invisible man watching you from the universe outside of your perception and capacity to interact with, who is judging you morally based upon a book written 2,000 years ago, if you didn't know that that was Christianity, you would think that that's crazy. If somebody didn't put it in the reference of Christianity and just said, I think there's an invisible person watching me from my ceiling, you would think that person is required to go into an asylum. But if you don't stop and actually listen to them and see what's going on with them and interacting with them, you're never going to be able to get to a place where you can identify, oh, is this person seeking truth in some way that I didn't understand? Or is this person, you know, genuinely uh, crazy, right? right? And needs and needs help. Okay, I, I see what you're saying. So okay, that's so where I'm coming from. We're, we're going to move on, man, to the... Sure. We're just going to move on to the last topic because we're, we're definitely going to come back to this, guys. We're definitely going to have another one. So um, my thing is with the border crisis, how do you feel about the border crisis that's going on in America right now? Do you think it's the Democrats' fault? Do you think it's the Republicans' fault? Do you think it's Greg Abbott's fault? Do you think the immigrants are just... It's just too many of them and they're just, you know, rushing our country, invading our country? How do you feel about this? You want to answer first, Amber? Uh, yeah, go I ahead. Think, go ahead. Um, so I feel like it definitely they're trying to blame it on Trump, but it's definitely the Biden Biden administration because you know Trump did his best to keep the border closed, and now you know first day they open the border and all these people are coming in, and you know they're trying to say like, oh it's majority women and children when actually it's majority men. And, you know, that is true. these countries releasing the people that they have in prison because they know that the United States border is open and they're sending all of their people, releasing their people from prison and sending them over here. We have women and children getting hurt. You know, more Americans are becoming sick. And even then, the worst part about it all is not only are you know, the government funding these people, they're housing them, funding them uh, financially, food, you know, letting them ride, uh, get, uh, you know, airplanes. Free transportation on buses, yeah, like planes, everything. yeah. Everything, when Americans can get nothing. They, you know, they don't help our homeless people. And it's like... Yeah. It's, it's horrible, and it's only getting worse, and it's going to continue to get worse until they actually do something about it. That's just how I feel. That's a good answer. How do you feel about it, Danny? So I think that we definitely have a problem um, at the border, uh, which is to say that we um, have a problem in the United States handling immigration, which we've had since probably the founding of the country. Uh, so it's not really a new problem. No, it's, it's not. Not simply. It's not. And even when we look at Trump versus Biden, uh, right now, Pew Research estimates there's about ten and a half million illegal immigrants in the United States. During Trump's administration, it fluctuated from a little bit above ten point five million to a little bit below ten point five million. So it's relatively the same. What is up dramatically and was increasing during the end of the Trump administration into the Biden administration was apprehensions. Now, apprehensions being up just means that we're catching more people. Um, which makes sense because there was the end of the pandemic. There was kind of messaging that seemed to indicate come across, right? They will not do as many uh, things to you and that were understaffed. Uh, so with all of those things in play, there's a higher likelihood of people coming over. If you now start staffing better, you start apprehending more people. Uh, but even they'll say most, uh, well, not most, but a lot of the people in which they're catching and then sending back are actually people who are on their second or third trip in. But but, but, but that kind of contradicts what the liberals uh, are preaching, right? Because don't they um, support, well, they call it undocumented, you know, undocumented people, but don't they support uh, mm. immigrants that's coming from other countries and stuff like this? Don't they support no human is illegal and love is love and all this, that, and the third? I mean, I'm, I just, I just kind of find that it comes funny to... that Joe Biden, yeah. I, I'm sorry, I just kind of, okay. I just kind of find it funny that Joe Biden you know what I'm saying? Basically opened the border day one, and he ba he's basically flying in immigrants. He's flying in all of, all of these people from Venezuela, from Mexico, from everywhere, and he's dumping them, excuse me, in all of these Democratic cities like New York, 
Chicago, Philly, you know, California. I just feel like, I mean, you guys kind of are bringing them here. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, don't you feel like it's it's kind of the Democrats' agenda to bring immigrants here to get like I, I don't know if it's well I do I believe it's for more votes and I believe it's for cheap labor, but I just want exactly. your opinion on it. So I, I mean I'm not aware of any scenario in which people were flying folks who were not um, legally going to be here from outside of what? the United States into the United States. Well, they, they, Joe Biden definitely has flown in many immigrants. And, and and when it came to the border thing with Trump, like when he was sending people back, because a lot of people want to say Trump was breaking up families as this then the third. That's because those people weren't related. Trump did a DNA test on those people. When it came to those adults and those children, those, those, they were not related at all. So nine times out of 10, those those adults that had those children, they were coming there to traffic that child or they were coming. They weren't co- they, were, they were not coming with good intentions. Joe Biden knew this. So the, the, the question still remains, were the people that were being flown in illegal? Were they seeking asylum? They were, illegal. were they, they were well, definitely how, do, how do you can you share that? Because I, I don't. I mean, I could. I extent. mean, I could. But I mean, I, I can just get into context. I mean, they're flying them into New York. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. They're, they, they're basically, um, there was one incident um, where um, they were basically telling the immigrants to go to Chicago, go to New York. These people will help you. These people will save you. I believe this was in Detroit now that I'm mistaken. Now, if I'm not mistaken, this happened in Detroit. So they're basically just, it, it's kind of hypocrisy a little bit because you guys are saying you support illegal immigrants, but you guys don't want to keep them. You guys are basically just sending them to all of the, you know, the big cities. Joe Biden sees these immigrants and he's dumping them all in the Democratic cities where, you know, where these, you know, where it could possibly manipulate the voting scale, you know? So, so they, they can't, there, there's some ability to understandably like change house representations. That's only once every 10 years, right? Cause it has to be when the census is being done. Um, yeah. And that can alter the number of house and um, seats, right? And that's one of the, the concerns you have. I know. Um, but when you look at that, when you actually look at the places that have uh, potentially illegal immigrants in them, another Pew Research study was done where you, you're not going to see that clearly in just Democratic states. You're actually going to see it in Florida and Texas and a bunch of other places all throughout the United States because, because the, illegal immigrants don't border. stay. <laughs> yeah, sure. But but what I mean is like that that's a benefit. Now, this isn't a new thing. Right. So immigration in this regard, with House being counted, um, is dates back to the 1800s. Uh, they I understand, also no, no, had I, I understand right? that. I know it's been I, I wouldn't necessarily call it a problem in the 1800s because I because I believe like well, what, 98 percent. Abraham of Lincoln thought were, it was a problem. And so did the Southern Democrats. They, it was one thing they did agree on. Right. Um, and the Northern Democrats. So all three of the okay. major parties in 1860 all agreed that immigration should be stopped. Yes. I'm, I, okay. Yes, it has been a problem, but it hasn't been this bad though. Like now, it's it's terrible, especially with all of these terrorists. You know, and it's like we don't even know where these people are coming from. That's the scary part. At least we knew that these people were coming from Ireland, that these people were coming from France, that these people were coming. You, from, you don't think that there was ever terrorists in Ireland? I never said that. I never said that. Okay. But I'm saying though, <laughs> at least we had. Look, when these people came back in the day. They were mm-hmm. getting documented. They would at least, you know what I'm saying? People would at least know their first and last name. Were you coming to work? Did you have a family? Now Biden is just letting them in. And they're, like, there's no documentation on these people. I mean, they're wearing Biden shirts. So, you know, these people are just wearing, you know, Biden shirts just to get past the border, in my opinion. And it's like, you can't just say, oh, it happened back in the day. Like, like that's the same thing that we're doing now. Like, but, I don't. But, really but that's not that's my true. argument. My argument is okay. that immigration has been a problem for a very long time. Now, um, we we were just talking about right in a transgendered existence that there would be data, right? There's biology that you can look at that's scientific. You can see evidence of a person's sex. This is where I get confused with talking points from different sides. And this happens on both sides. It's not a uniquely mm-hmm. conservative thing or liberal thing, right? Um, If you're looking for data, hard data for someone to be able to use a bathroom, why aren't you looking for hard data about who's coming in, 
what immigration we are, looks I mean, like. we actually do have the data. We we have well over, I believe, mm-hmm. I say, going on 11 million immigrants as of this year. Like there, there has been even in December, there has been more immigrants. Last year, December of 2023, there has been more immigrants coming into the country than American births. So more what? immigrants came into the country than people being born in December of 2023 in America. That's insane to me. Now, are you saying uh, both legal and illegal immigrants? Or are you just illegal, talking illegal? Illegal, undocumented, so, un- undocumented people that are entering this I would, country. I would yes. find that very difficult to believe because, like the the just the looking at the numbers, right? Um, the total populations were I thought it was something like ten and a half million. Um, just 2023. We're, we're just talking about people being born just in the month of December, all in America. You know what I'm saying? And we're and we're comparing that to the people entering America illegally, maybe legally. Right, too, right. I'm no, I'm, sure. I'm talking about the the entering. So you're saying 11 million people entered. No, 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 illegally. no, no, I, I, no, no, no. Or do you I, mean I, that there's I'm a total of 11 total. million people? I yeah. said 11 million in total. Okay. 11 million so, in total. So if you look at that difference from last year, 2023, the highest number that anyone has is 10 and a half million people. So that's 500,000 people, right? So births in the United States. So births in the United States in 2024, or not 2024, 2023, because we don't have a full year yet, right? Um, I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, what I'm saying. So e- um, even if that was like one percent of the population being born, because I think we're at 1.8 or something like that in the United States on average. Um, that would be what three million people being born. So that's six times the maximum number that they're saying are coming in. Now that doesn't mean that that's not a, a, a significant number. It just means that that talking point is an exaggerated talking point. I get the point of it. I get the I get the in like the uh, merit behind it. Yeah. So it's it's somewhere around three point seven million people were born uh, in 2023, according to this website I just looked up. Um, I'm not doing a bunch of research on it to see like if that's a valid website or not, but that roughly tracks. I, I don't know. If, I don't know if they was referring to that or or if they was referring. I don't know if they was referring to 11 million in 2023 or if they was referring right. to 11 million to Joe Biden just being president in general. You know what I'm well, saying? Well, so, so that's the thing is that when Trump was in office, it was 10.5 million people. As COVID hit, it dropped down to 10.2 million. According to Pew Research, it's very difficult to track illegal immigrants in the United States, right? Um, right. But um, it, the best numbers we have are these same numbers, and they're pretty consistent in how they do that reporting. So you, know, you went from 10.5 down to uh, the lowest number of 10.2 during the height of the pandemic because no one could cross any borders. It was very difficult um, to get anywhere or travel. So anyone traveling would be a red flag, right? Um, And then it went up to 10.5 million uh, again um, shortly thereafter, I think within like a year, year and a half, um, which is why we see such a a huge influx, right? Mm -hmm. And then it now, you know, I'm not even going to research the 11 million number. I trust you. That's fine. Even if it's at 11 million right now, right? Which isn't the highest it's ever been. Um, but it's higher than it's been recently, uh, but it's not the highest it's ever been in the United States. Um, if you get up to that 11 million number, right, then at that point, it's only 500,000 people from the, the the previous year, previous year and a half. Now, I say only not to de- 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 you know, make that number seem small, but mm-hmm. to say, say that that is a lot less than the talking points that I hear, and not 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 from you necessarily, but from you know more I, no, conservative I, I, I media, right? I understand, yeah, from the people like, you talk to. Yeah. We're we're like the the mass media is going to say, oh, let's compare this one number, eleven million, with this other number, five hundred thousand, right? Right. Um, and one looks way bigger than the other. Well, why do they pitch it that way? Because one looks way bigger than the other, and they may even have the real number. They they may say eleven million total people in the United States, and mm-hmm. over here they'll say new, you know, five hundred thousand people or whatever the case may be. Right? The the screenshot might be accurate, but the person speaking is trying to emphasize the variation and how that's really crazy. 
right? Like the 11 okay. million people have come in. And then if I mean, you look yeah, at that's birds, what, that's you what say the media is going to do people, anyways. Right? Yeah. Exactly, right? Then you say, oh, United States birds, oh, 3 million people. So if you compare, we only had 3.7 million birds in the United States this last year, and there's 11 million illegal immigrants. That's crazy. There's more illegal immigrants in the United States than were born in the United States. Well, that was true all through Trump's per period of time, too. We had more illegal immigrants in the United States than any births we had, mm -hmm. right? But now they want to talk about it as if it's new or something new for Biden. Instead of the accurate number of saying, oh, it's increased I mean, it's not you know, 200,000 people. I mean, the, they're doing more crimes than ever before, though. They were, not, they were not this violent. They didn't have this much freedom. We're talking about illegal immigrants. They did not have this much freedom when Trump was in president. This, this leads to my last question, actually. Yep. Do you feel that an illegal should have more opportunities in America than an actual American who's been born here for, I, I don't know, 30 plus years? So I think that Americans don't have enough freedoms right now in the United States, that they don't have enough opportunities, I should say. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that that's going to be a genuine talking. I think you're going to find that's true. Anyone you talk to is on the liberal side. We all think, um, generally speaking, that there are not enough opportunities for Americans here in the United States. OK, OK. But my thing is, do you think that we should give it to the immigrants first before us? Because you do know that in places like New York, they're giving mm -hmm. out free debit cards they're giving out free. Do you know how the debit card thing existed? Do, do you know why that exists? I why mean, that, yes, I, I, I believe they're trying to house these immigrants so they could get a vote from the Democrat. Well, the, but it's not new. No, it it's isn't. Actually but cheaper I mean, it's like than their old gonna, way of doing things. Are we going to destroy our country, though, just so, uh, you know, a farce party can just keep can just stay in power? But, but here's the of, thing. Like, this is actually a, a, like New York, if anything, is spending less money today after the debit card scenario than they did prior to the debit card scenario. That's actually why they initiated the debit card situation, because previous to that, they were actually spending more money per person uh, who was coming in uh, seeking asylum uh, than anybody today. They're spending less right. money, which is the goal, right? Like we want them to spend less money on immigrants and so they have more money to spend on on local people. Okay. They they did that. Um, it was a cost saving measure. But and what about the shelters? It's easy to track, right? So it's easy to track. What what about the shelter? Do you, do you think that we shouldn't okay. shelter people we'll, seeking we'll, need? Okay, we'll, we'll take shelters out of the equation. Will you? Yeah. Would you house an illegal immigrant in your home? I would house a person who's come through the normal vetting process for sure, and I might I house said a stranger. <laughs> I said illegal. So so. I might house any stranger um, in my house. Uh, it would depend, right? Um, so one of the things, and I'm not Christian, but one of the things that I think is remarkable is that in the Christian Bible, right, mm -hmm. they do recommend that you have, uh, you know, I think it's a candle and a stale piece of bread at your door at all times. And why? Do you know that story? I'm I'm not familiar with it. Educate me a little bit. So this is the one where, and I forget which book it's in, um, but you know Jesus goes around, or the king goes around, and is like, hey, and to you, you know, you offered me um, a place to stay, and uh, you know, um, a, a place and bread, something to eat, right? Mm -hmm. It was this idea that someone could come knocking, and that person could be Jesus, um, and you should treat everyone as if they could be God, essentially, right? Mm -hmm. That's the kind of metaphor as it were so you have the, but the realistically you know, so, speaking so is people everyone did. gonna be god so people actually kept in the early days of these christianity like in christianity even in greek society people kept nearby their door enough for if a stranger were to come by they could actually offer them aid mm -hmm. now i'm not saying that that's what everyone should do the world is dramatically changed back in that day the worst a person could have was a sword and swords were really expensive so they'd have to be a really rich um, you know, like a uh, poor person, right. Or homeless individual that, that that's not, we don't, that doesn't jive. Right. Um, right. so it, but today it's really cheap to go and get a gun or to get a knife, like they're, they're mass produced. So there's a lot more potential, uh, risk. Um, but I don't see anywhere, uh, in the Bible where that's changed or it said, Hey, you know, in a couple thousand years, stop doing this or don't, um, offer aid, uh, to those in need. Right. Um, 
So one of the things is I don't think that people should do that. This is why I'm a liberal. I think because there's some safety concerns, right, that we should, though, still honor that tradition because it's a good tradition. And we should seek out a community that does that. Well, right now, we don't have a community that does that. But right. That's what that just leads to my last question. Why? Why do you like do you really think people like let, let's just be honest, they're just going to be bad people out there. People will take sure. advantage of of nice people Certainly. like that would do something like yes. that. Yes. And I mean, to my knowledge, let that like the history of these immigrants, like they're not coming with good intentions. So if you know this person, like, let's say you have a person like Judas that might show up to your doorstep like. Do, would you really like take that risk? Like I understand, I, I go off probability, not possibility. If that makes sure. sense. So yeah, and the probability you, is that they're unlikely to be a bad person. Exactly. Right? So so yeah. if, if but the risk is high, right? The frequency here. is low. The we're, severity is We're talking is about high. illegals here, though. Like they're if sure. they, if they're coming with bad intentions, in my opinion. Otherwise, they would not coming. They would not be coming in illegally. You see what I'm saying? So we're. But how talking would you about, know that they're an illegal immigrant? Because if they didn't have, because if they are you going to ask any stranger at the door for their documentation? No, I would not. But at the right. end of the day, if I knew their intentions were good, they would present me with at least their name and their intentions. An illegal let, immigrant is going to do that. Let me shift the story a little bit. So, you know, right now we could both agree. Some some guy shows up at our door in the middle of the night. We're probably both going to not open it. I'll pretend right. I'm not here or something like that. Or I might start filming it with my ring camera, whatever the case may be. Right. Like that's what we do today. Right. Cause we, we have a high level of distrust. There's a whole, there's a lot of risk or severity issues. I would actually be curious how they walked as far out uh, away from the city to get to my house. But um, the, the, if you shifted that just for a moment and you envision um, maybe it's a little kid, it's nine years old. Right. The person's nine years old or maybe it's a little kid, um, uh, uh, two little kids uh, uh, and two adults, a man and a woman. Um, they've got a boy and a girl with them and they come to your door. Mm -hmm. It seems less risky. Right. Immediately. Just from the story change. But at nine at night, though, like anyone, anyone with common sense carrying luggage, carrying... they don't have any place to stay. You're the only house nearby with a light on. I mean, it's not inconceivable. But would you but actually? We don't know if you, they're illegal least, or not, though. Sure, but that, would you actually stop and potentially have a conversation with them versus the one solo just guy outside? If it was, if it wasn't nine at night, yes, I would. But if it's nine at night, then that's kind of putting my, you know, what I'm saying safety sure. at risk. Okay. You feel what so, I'm and, and and that's a, that's a difference of opinion. You know, if I were to see this, I would probably immediately assume, and I could be wrong, and it could be to my detriment, but I would immediately assume this is a family. Families are you know, there's got to be something dire that's happened to them. And that's why they're mm -hmm. stuck outside my house. Right. So I would at least go to them and ask them, Hey, what's going on is, can I help you out with something? I might even pay to put them up in a hotel. So they're not staying here if they didn't have money and I might be the sucker for it. Right. But at the end right. of the day, those two nine-year-olds are now taken care of and I was a sucker, but who cares? I was able to help two nine-year-olds, right? But best case scenario, we're, you know, best case scenario, they were truthful, even slightly truthful. And I was able to help a family for a day, a week, whatever the case may be, whatever I could, you know, manage to do, right? Mm -hmm. And again, I might not let them stay in my house, but I might try and create an alternative. You'll try to help them, yeah. Right? That's a really, that's a really interesting, that's a really um, interesting point, man. And I'll tell you a story, and, and this was remarkable to me because I don't think I would do this to this day, and I still very much wish I would. I, I, I hope I was this kind of person, right? Like, this is the the, the dream, and I, I met this this family when I was very young, and uh, this guy, I, I won't say his name just in case he might listen to it or someone else may hear it, but uh -huh. um, he, he, his family was wealthy enough that, like, he was learning piano when he was like six, seven year old. They had a grand piano in their front house. They had this this nice fountain in front of their house. It, I mean, it was a fantastic place. I lived in a rural community that was mostly Hispanic and there was a, a like a rich area. I was not a part of that, um, mm -hmm. but I had some friends in the area, right? Um, and they were, um, I wanna say they were from Asia, um, some somewhere. Um, I, I wanna say they're Chinese. They could have been something else. I'm, I apologize uh, to them in advance for misremembering, but um, I was at their house one day and I was like looking at the grand piano and I was there cause we, we were reading uh, partners. So I would do uh, reading studies with my friend uh, who went to the same elementary school as me. Mm -hmm. And I asked him, I was like, man, that fountain outside is like really cool. It's very detailed. Like who did that? 
And he started telling me this story. His dad um, met a homeless guy. And the guy had a sign that said, we'll work for food. And he walked up to him and he said, do you mean it? Right. You know, and the guy was like, I do very much mean it. He's like, okay, well, I've got some tasks around the house that I could do that, that I think you could do. Um, and let's bring you over there and I'll get you some food. Right. So he did that one day and then uh, he set him up actually, just like I said, uh, in, in kind of a nearby hotel, it could have been a motel or something like that. The, the specific detail is not important. Um, mm -hmm. And he started to interact with this guy, right. More and more. And brought him over and kept having him do stuff. Well, it turns out this guy had an amazing craft, right? He actually was a landscaper previously. He was a, like a minor sculptor. He could do cement work, you know, that kind of stuff. And he built him. Very then. talented, right? Yeah, he, they built him as a, as a gift, um, this fountain. And the guy never bragged about it. He, his dad never talked about it. He never said, this is what I did. Look at me, right? Um, the end of the story goes, he gave the guy a suit, um, asked him, hey, you know, I can't at this point help you anymore, um, but... I hope that this sets you up well, that I hope this teaches you that there's people still out there that'll give you a chance. Um, here, here's a suit um, so you can go and try and get a job and you can continue to work for food like you know any dignified person out there and you don't have to be on the street. That's anymore. a really good person, man. Right? It's a really good person, right? And, and I wish, like, I was that person. I wish I was that wealthy, you know, even at this point in time and could do that kind of thing. Yeah, but, for sure. Like, you and me both. Like, that's our ideal, right? We both hear that story and we both go, wow, man, this guy. Like, yeah. That's a that's a good guy, right? So this is where the disconnect is, and this is the problem. When those people come through the the border, we have only two choices. We can assume the vast majority of them are criminals and turn them all away, including the potential of the nine year old kids and the parents that are out there, or we can create some kind of vetting process that we know is not perfect, to mm -hmm. only allow in a minimum number of criminals in the hopes that we're allowing in the maximum number of families and kids who are in desperate need. Now, I agree that if we were in a situation where that $1 that goes to them or however, you know, $100, $1,000, whatever it happens to be, would have instead gone to the families of poor people in the United States, then I would say, because we're in the United States, that money needs to go to the citizens of the United States first, right? Exactly. But we're not in that situation. Because nobody does that. It's not about spending it on the American people. Even the GOP will admit this in their actions, right? Um, it's not about spending it on the American people or spending it to help other people from foreign countries. That's not the or. It's either don't spend that to help anyone, and likely it buffers some kind of tax break to corporations, or spend it to help these people who are foreign um, in aid because our state laws prevent us from helping the people internally. The federal government can't come in and help someone in Illinois. Right. The federal government can only give Illinois the money to say, try and help your people. And they get to exactly. decide what they want to do. Right. But they can help the kids coming across the border. That can be a unilateral federal decision. Right. But I mean, like I said, I mean, like, I mean, me and the young lady said earlier, man, like yeah. this, this is just my last of remarks. Like, I mean, these, these aren't really kids, you know what I'm saying? Crossing the border. And me personally, I just feel like if they do want to come with good intentions, they would come legally. That's all I'm saying. Like you can, you can, you can enter the country. You, you know what I'm saying? With your name, with your intentions, where you want to work, what's your craft, you know what I'm saying? So it's, I just feel like it's always a, a good way to do everything. You know what I'm saying? And sure. if you're going to be entering someone's country and you know that, you know, say you speak a different language or you know that your country might not have the best reputation when it comes to this other country, so you have to try to, you know what I'm saying, give yourself a good reputation, then I would just take that, you know what I'm saying, I would really just consider that, you know, like, I would just, I honestly would not try to go in illegally at all, if even if, when I know that the problem, well, I'm not even just saying America just have a border problem, Canada oh, has sure. a border problem, like, a, a lot of countries have border problems, but I just feel mm -hmm. like everybody think that, America is the land of the free and nothing's free here. You know what I'm saying? So they feel like they <laughs> can just come money. here. Right. So it's just like, they feel like everybody can just come here, get a free house, get free food, get this, then the third, you know what I'm saying? And it's just like, we have to pay for all that me and you and you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And Amber as well. So I, I mean, me personally, I just feel like just come legally. And if you, if you aren't, doing anything bad if you're not trying to traffic drugs if you're not trying to traffic children if you aren't trying to blow us up you know what i'm saying then there's nothing wrong with getting documented 
and just entering the country legally. Like they, like now it's about to be to a point where there are more people coming in through trains and planes more illegally than legally now. So now we're about to have more illegal immigrants entering the country than legal immigrants. I think we're already, if not there already. So, and, and I'll, I'll make this the last remarks on, on immigration for me. What, what I would say is that um, if it were realistic for the person to do that, then I agree. Like if we, if there was, if we could clear some of the obstacles from people to be able to get documented, not necessarily become citizens or anything like that, but become documented so that um, we could get them as part of the official tax base. We could get them in and vet them correctly, right? If we could do that at, at any kind of uh, speed, that would alleviate some of those fears and concerns. Well, they um, have translators. They have translators. They have people who get in contact with family members. You know sure. What I'm like, I, well, have, but but, but this... what I'm saying is that like there's there, you know, it's not it's not a person usually coming in from I mean, they're coming through the Mexico border, but it's not usually a person coming in from Mexico. It's coming. They're coming in from Venezuela. They're coming in yeah, from Honduras. Yeah, I, I, they're coming I in from. Mexico, yeah. No, no, I know. I know. But like Mexico doesn't want them in Mexico. Right. right. So so they're in a they're in a situation where either they keep going or they have to go back. And quite frankly, like if I was living in a town that was just like filled with, you know, uh, nothing but gangs and they would just shoot people's houses and they just shoot people's cars. Right. Um, I would leave. I would just get up and go. Right. Like there's nothing that's going to keep me there. And if the next city over said, man, you got up and went and we need to have you wait, you know, years of time to get processed into this city. Uh, so you can either like camp outside on the verge of, on the edge of danger or you, you know, you may be forced to try and sneak in and steal food. What's right. the person to do? So I get it on our side. I wish we had a better process and I don't think that people should just come here illegally. I agree with you mm -hmm. on their side. The people with good intentions have to necessarily look like people with bad intentions um, because they're trying to escape something terrible. And I think we had a better, if we had a better system to be able to vet that and be able to track that in a quick order, well, guess what? I would be on board for that. Mm -hmm. Right. And that was something that was trying to be done, at least in part. And whether for, you know, good reasons, bad reasons, I don't think any bill gets submitted because of good reasons anymore. But um, the the GOP, the GOP and, uh, you know, the Democrat and Republican combined bipartisan bill about the border actually had money in it to establish more people at the border, more staff to be able to do this kind of stuff, to be able to actually vet the people coming in, be able to actually check the people who are trying to go across the border, to be able to catch the people and see if they need to send them back, right? Um, mm -hmm. But it got shot down. Now, in part, it had a bunch of money for Ukraine and Israel and all sorts of other things like that, because that's also a big concern for the Democrats. And they're trying to everyone's trying to leverage everybody else in order to get these things in. Gaza as well, you know, because, you know, we're they're funding them as well now. Uh, sure. In, in part. I mean, but like the Gaza aid's really tiny. I don't know if Six you read the bill. billion is tiny. Well, did you read the bill? Because like it's six billion of a lot. So, so a lot of the, the Israel, yeah, the border bill, a lot of the Israel and Gaza stuff is linked to Israel. Like it goes through Israel still. But um, they, they got 13, they have 13 billion going to Ukraine. I think they have 16 sure. billion going to Gaza. They have another 13 going to Israel. You know what I'm saying? Like they have like what, 2 billion going to Red Sea conflicts. You know, like, oh, there's all kinds. Yeah, it, it's all kinds of money. Yeah, yeah. There, there's tons of money going all sorts of different places. And when I was starting to read it, because I, you know, it was the border but bill. Why not like, the border though? But, but the border does have money in it. You just have to get to like Only page thirty. Like, probably like ten billion, but that's it. Why is sure? Like, why is Israel and Ukraine getting more on the border bill than the yeah. actual border? That's what I, I'm saying. I, I can tell you the real answer to that question, if you want, which is not an answer that either the Democrats or the Republicans really like. And that's the the fact that Israel uh, being on our side, we, whether we like it or not, whether we like them or not, um, them being a, an ally to us uh, is more important to our safety um, that's because the of all only the things we've done ally in the world. we have in the Middle East, though. Exactly. That's exactly the reason why we spend so much money on them, right? Um, and, well, to be fair, like, we also learned a bunch of stuff. So we learned, like, desalination uh, techniques uh, from the Israel, which, like, American people paid for. This, this is a big problem, right? 
we uh, we spend money into our universities with taxes. Um, those universities uh, go on to do research for pharmaceutical companies, and the pharmaceutical companies get a profit for it. We spend our taxes and send it to Israel, and Israel does a bunch of R and D to learn, you know, create a defense matrix to be able to create desalination stuff to be able to get us things, and we don't get a get a profit from that. I very much agree that the United States citizenry is getting shafted when it comes to tax dollars. However. Yes. Um, I also agree with the military intelligence that basically says if Israel is not there to be at the top tier of its technology to be able to defend itself, mm -hmm. people are going to attack us. Um, and that's probably because of bad stuff we've done in the past and also for just things that people assume we've done in the past. Right? Now, now, when you say people are going to attack us, I mean, who are those people? Sure. I, I think if we stop paying money to Israel, I think even Israel might attack us. But um, the, everybody like there's other places, other countries uh, in there like Saudi Arabia. You've got Egypt. You've got um, course, you know, yeah, Iran. Course, right. Like lots of people have a long history with the United States where we did a lot of bad stuff to them. They did a lot of bad stuff to us. Um, yeah. I mean, Iran, we were we were literally selling their and the, them money, them weapons. So they could fight Iraq, who was our official ally in the 1980s. Yeah, for sure. Right? Yeah. So we're we're not above board on this. Um, and we did that. Why? Well, it's a great way to make a buck. Yeah. Right? It's and war. it's a great way to get a vote as, to, as well. Yeah, of course. And I mean, that, you know, we had Ronald Reagan in the office at that time, mm -hmm. right? So like, like it's, we have a long history of doing bad stuff all over the world, but we also have a long history of defending places in the world that, that, that I don't think this is like a checkbook where you balance it. Right. Like we really need to deplete one of those things really fast. Um, right. But we need to also buffer like at home and we need to, you know, like if we were just doing good acts around the world, I think we'd be a lot safer anyways. But um, you know, then we just have like places like Russia disliking us. Um, right. But yeah. Anyways, the, that that's, to me, that bill really said these are our, our priorities on both parties, by the way. Both parties are more concerned about Israel and Ukraine and them being able to defend us, the, the vast majority of the members, than they are about the border. The border is just something that hits home because there are certain people who get to see it and it's big in the news. Um, but it's not even as bad as a lot of people are making it out to be. It is bad, but it's definitely being exaggerated. The Ukraine yeah. war... And yeah. Israel war are a lot, uh, they're being downplayed. They're way worse than they actually look in our media. So we Trust feel okay. Me, yeah, I know war is terrible. War is definitely <laughs> terrible. And I would just argue that this is my last thing because we got yeah. it because it's been sure. an hour or something like yeah, that. But like I would 10. argue that, I would argue that, I mean, Ukraine, if we didn't really fund Ukraine, I don't really think that we have to worry about Russia attacking us really because, you know, it, it, like how our country is set up. Like, there will be, honestly, no way that, that Russia could attack us, really. And then as far as with Ukraine, I mean, let's just be honest. Russia already took, like, one-third. Like, one-third of Ukraine is all is just gone. Let's just be honest. One-third of Ukraine is gone. So, I mean, would it really benefit us to have an ally like Ukraine at that point? Because, you know, we I honestly feel like Trump and uh, Putin actually became... Really, I'm not going to say they were friends or anything like sure. that, but, but they were much more uh, likable to one another than yeah. Biden. And you know, what I'm saying just 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 a way to just you know, what I'm saying use each other to where it wouldn't be any um just people dying in the Middle East or just anywhere sure. in general. You know what I'm saying? So I just feel like, I mean, Russia isn't really an issue. You know what I'm saying? So I mean, and if it was, I mean, the people would really know that. I think China is more of an issue than Russia. Like, if I think China is the number one issue, if we're being honest. But that's just that's gonna be a topic for another day, man. Right. But, no, and and I'll just say this really quickly on that. The reason uh, why we're so concerned about Russia is twofold. One, we get to test our technology in Ukraine, so our drones, right? It's all our drones. It's all our communication stuff. Um, we get to test that, and we know we're gonna be outnumbered, right, in a war against China. So China's got a much bigger military than we do and an almost similarly technologically advanced military. So this is a really great test for our technology to be able to defend against a, no, new, uh, a numbers superior group, but technologically similar uh, military. And the second thing I would say is that the war in Ukraine has done at least one thing for the United States, which has made us the uh, gas and oil uh, exporter of the world. Uh, right. Russia used to be that. So Russia had all of Europe basically tied to its energy 
And now they're tied to us, which means we've bolstered our defenses in any upcoming uh, conflicts. Um, so that's why Ukraine is important. To be really cynical, I don't think we would be in the Ukraine war um, if um, we didn't have those two pieces. If we weren't making money as a country, whether or not people are making the money individually, but as a, as a country, establishing ourselves and keeping ourselves at economically powerful. And two, if we didn't have a vested interest in testing our military uh, prowess, I think we would have just sort of set back and been like, OK, yeah. um, you know. And that's that's unfortunate. Um, and, and I think that just shows like th maybe the differences in the uh, administrations, like the prior administration didn't really see this as a strategic interest. Um, but the current administration and probably the current military leaders, not necessarily the administration itself in either of these cases, um, is going, no, 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 wait, it's more complicated than that. We need to defend them. Um, and I don't think that that's just being shared with the, the United States citizenry in that kind of direct fashion. Okay, I think I, I think a lot of people will find that interesting, man. But that's that's all the time we got for yep. today, guys. No worries. And uh, make sure you guys check out Danny. I don't know if you want to drop some social media links or anything for the people so they can check you out. Sure. Um, so I'm just at Caffeine Zombies. Uh, you can find me on Twitter or YouTube. Um, yeah. Okay, man. So make sure you guys hit that like and subscribe button, man. And we will see you guys next time. And I am out. Peace. Thanks. Yep. This video is brought to you by Caffeine Zombies. Coffee's so good, it'll wake the dead.